Now, I could uh, sit here for hours watching this little drinking bird, but that's because I don't have any social life. Instead, I'm going to explain to you how this works. Now, this is one of those classic thermodynamics type demonstrations. What we have here are two hollow glass bulbs joined by a glass tube. Inside this glass system, which is completely closed off from the atmosphere, we have a volatile liquid, a li liquid that evaporates very easily, and red colouring added just for dramatic effect. Now what happens at this point here, we see that the bird's head is swinging. The bird's head is covered in felt and it's wet. Anything thrashing about in the air like that when it's wet will evaporate and as water evaporates it takes away some latent heat with it. Therefore the head cools down. Because the head is cooled down the pressure down in the bottom bulb is higher than in the head. So the pressure forces the liquid up into the head, making the head heavier. So the system becomes top heavy and it tips over, dunking the bird's beak into the water where it picks up a little bit more water to keep the head moist. And the cycle continues. So that's the conventional explanation that you'll get in the textbooks. And I, you know, more or less agree with that. But is that, is, is that worrying you a little bit? Is this thing a perpetual motion machine? Now the reason why I ask the question is this a perpetual motion machine is because actually I, it's not entirely clear what's driving this engine forward. With your classic heat engines like a steam engine, what drives the, the engine is a difference in temperature. You have the hot boiler uh, which is like your hot reservoir and then you've got your cold reservoir which is the atmosphere that, that all the steam is vented out to. And it's that temperature difference that drives that engine. Now we've got temperature difference here. We've got the bulb here is sitting at room temperature, but the head, head is a little bit colder because of that evaporation we talked about earlier. Is that what's driving this? Is that temperature difference what's driving this? And if it is, then in a sense, it kind of feels almost like a perpetual motion machine because the only reason that that's colder is because the engine itself, the motion of that head, helps to evaporate the water which carries away latent heat and therefore cools the head slightly. So it's sort of feel, starting to feel like this will just keep going as long as I keep it wet. All right, so it's not a perpetual motion machine in that sense because eventually I'll run out of water in the beaker. But suppose, let's, let's not, maybe not go perpetual, but what if it's... Let's, what if we wanted to go for a really long time? What if I had a very, very large reservoir of water under the desk here? It just keeps that topped up. Would this thing just keep going as long as I supply water? So maybe not a perpetual motion machine, but a very, very long time motion machine. Um, that's not quite right either, because there's no temperature difference there. I mean, the air and the water at the same temperature, they've been sitting there for hours. Essentially, the bulb down here, the water in there and the air, they're all pretty much at the same temperature because it's, been, it's only this bit that's a bit colder. So something else is driving, is driving this forward. Okay. You can see that if I make it evaporate more quickly, it goes faster. So it's... It really is this evaporation process that is driving this, that, you know, that is responsible for this to, uh, to, to work. 
So what's going to make it stop? Okay, what if I... create a horrible hot muggy day. You know those horrible hot muggy humid days when the sweat on your body won't evaporate and you just never cool off. Let's create that artificially. If I go and stick this over the system so that the air conditioning isn't sucking the water vapour out of the air, what's going to happen to all that water that's evaporating off the head? It's going into the air in there. Eventually it's going to become 100% humidity inside there. So it's going to be completely saturated with water vapour. We're going to have equilibrium between the water vapour and the water in the beaker. And at that point, this should stop swinging. So in other words, what's really driving this is the fact that before, the system was not at equilibrium. We had not yet completely filled the atmosphere with water vapour. But the moment that it becomes full. Now the system is t totally at equilibrium. There's an equilibrium between water vapour and water. Now the system will stop moving. So it's not a perpetual motion machine. So the take-home message is, even though the textbook explanation that I gave you is correct, it's not actually the whole story. So whenever you read anything or you hear anything from somebody like me, don't assume it's the whole story. You, you, you've got to follow up. You've got to keep investigating and looking deeper into the question. I'll leave you with one more thing. Would this thing work better in the tropics or in the desert?